Hey guys, this is Soy from the Channel Fred Order Network. This week we have a special edition of Tuned Up where we're going to show you some of the most underrated Pokemons of Generation 1. Hope you guys enjoy. Let us know what you think in the comments below after the video. Everyone loves Pokemon, but not all Pokemon are loved equally. Hey, I'm Vincent, and today here on Cartoon Hangover, we're going to take you through our list of the top 12 underrated Pokemon from Generation 1. When I say underrated, I mean Pokemon that just never quite got the credit or popularity they deserve, taking into account a bit of everything. Character design, moves, some stats in the video games, and personality. Uh, unfortunately, that means Farfetch just doesn't quite make the list. I mean, sorry, buddy, I love tiny little spring onion celery wielding ducks as much as the next guy, but come on. Number 12, Magneton. Sometimes, Pokemon evolutions are simple. Take an existing Pokemon and put more faces on it. Diglett becomes Dugtrio. Doduo becomes Dodrio, and Clink becomes Clink Clank Clink Clank Clink Clinker cl uh, Is that another face on that big gear? What the hell is this thing? Of all the multi-faced Pokemon, Magneton stands out above the rest. It's got pretty good speed and special attack in the video games, it totally looks like a sculpture made by a hipster art student, and as an added bonus, this cluster of magnets represents friendship and the importance of sharing your food. Remember in Pokemon Snap, when three little Magnemites evolved because they were all eating the same apple? Aww. Number 11. Parasect. There are plenty of Pokemon horror stories out there, but back in Generation 1, we had something truly special in Parasect. It's a zombie. Uh -huh. According to its Pokedex entry, Parasect is a host parasite pair in which the parasite mushroom has taken over the host bug. Yowza! That's why Parasect has no pupils. It's a freaking zombie. Zombie Pokemon! <laughs> Number 10. Gold Duck. Back when Pokemon was just starting to become popular and everyone was watching the first few seasons of the anime, Psyduck really made a name for itself. A big yellow duck that constantly has headaches, even on paper that makes for a funny, memorable character. So memorable, in fact, that people completely forget about its evolution. Gold Duck. This Pokémon has pretty decent stats all across the board, and can learn a handful of Psychic-type moves despite it remaining a solid Water-type. We're talking about a blue duck with a smirk that seems to say, I know something you don't know, topped off with a freaking Infinity Stone in its forehead. Gold Duck, man. Number 9. Doduo, the wingless, two-headed bird, is undeniably cute. With its two heads that don't always seem to agree, a ridiculous voice, and the fact that it's perhaps the most original-looking bird Pokémon of the first generation, it's not hard to imagine why we think Doduo is underrated. Number 8. Primeape. While it's not uncommon for a Pokémon to be difficult to catch and put up an occasional fight before being caught by a trainer, Primeape stands tall amongst its peers for being possibly the most stubborn, hard-to-catch Pokémon in Ash Ketchum's entire run as a Pokémon trainer, refusing time and time again to simply accept its Pokéball prison and even going so far as to steal Ash's trademark hat Primeape makes this list because it's a fluffy ball of stubborn monkey rage, with the video game attack stat to mostly back that up. If Pokémon were real, Primeape would be both terrifying and very tempting to hug at the same time. Number 7. Muck. If a real-life Primeape would be terrifying, just imagine the nightmares a real-life Muck would give you. Muck is living sludge. Living, poisonous, amorphous sludge with a big, drippy mouth and lifeless, cold eyes. Imagine this thing turning a corner toward you as you're walking by an alleyway. Imagine it slipping beneath the crack under your bedroom door late at night as it cries out. Muck is underrated because it's the boogeyman of the Pokémon universe, and nobody seems to realize that. Number 6. Hypno. I know what you're thinking. Vincent, what could be scarier than the boogeyman of the Pokémon universe? My answer? The Freddy Krueger of the Pokémon universe, aka Hypno, a Pokémon who has yet to really hit mainstream attention for the serious walking creepypasta that it is. I'll give you two of its Pokédex entries from the video games. When it is very hungry, it puts humans it meets to sleep, then it feasts on their dreams. It carries a pendulum-like device, 
There was once an incident in which it took away a child it hypnotized. Oh! Oh, really? Hypno? Just once, huh? That poor kid! Number 5. Sandshrew has the whole package when it comes to pre-evolutions from a design standpoint, but it makes this list because of one particular episode of Pokémon's first season, The Path to the Pokémon League. In this episode, Ash meets AJ, a very different type of trainer from the hero we're used to. AJ and Sandshrew have a bond similar to Ash and Pikachu's, however his training methods are very different from Ash's. Using whips, tight bracing, and constantly commanding Sandshrew to dive into water its natural weakness, this episode really presented some themes that made us think, even as kids. Was AJ's tough love type of training acceptable? Isn't this animal abuse? What could cause someone to be so hard on themselves and their friends? No answers to these questions are given, and AJ doesn't change his ways in the end. Ash and AJ part ways as unlikely friends. This episode really makes an impact, and because of it, along with its adorable armadillo-y appearance, Sandshrew should serve as a constant reminder of the incredibly dynamic relationships Pokémon can have with their trainers. Number 4. Weezing Weezing is my personal favorite Pokémon of all time, which just might have something to do with it showing up on this list, but I can tell you why. Weezing has a very impressive defense stat in the games, and his character design's got this interesting blend of I'm gross, but also I'm appealing and helpless. I have no arms. Weezing has a Pokédex entry in Generation 3 that reads, By diluting its toxic gases with a special process, the highest grade of perfume can be extracted. Meaning Weezing is both a big, gassy, purple balloon, as well as a floating metaphor that you shouldn't judge a book by its cover. Except when it comes to Farfetch'd, number 3, Venusaur. Anybody who grew up with the first generation of Pokémon could recall a popular debate among Poké fans. Who's cooler? Blastoise or Charizard? Blastoise or Charizard? When going to buy the first Pokémon games outside of Japan, you had the choice between Pokémon Red, with a fire-breathing dragon on the front case of the game, and Pokémon Blue, featuring a burly turtle tank hybrid. Two designs that were super easy to identify with as a young, aspiring Pokémon trainer. And then there was Venusaur, the dinosaur, frog, flower, plant thing, sitting on the other side of the room, never quite feeling cool enough for the cool kid's lunch table. Our leafy friend has a design that maybe seemed too complicated to kids at the time. This, coupled with the fact that it never landed a major role in the anime, leads Venusaur to being high up on our underrated list. Its lack of popularity shouldn't be mistaken for a lack of power, though. With stats arguably better than Blastoise's, a design that's more unique than its counterparts, and a super wicked cool holographic Pokémon card back in the day, Venusaur deserves more love. Uh, by the way, guys, remember Venustoise? Try that on for size! Number 2. Rattata Pokémon fans that started back in Generation 1 will tell you, Rattata is synonymous with... Ugh. It seemed like every five seconds, this totally useless rat would show up in the early routes of Pokémon Blue and Pokémon Red, only serving to waste your time. But Rattata isn't all that bad. Ask yourself, would Pokémon be the same without it? Rattata made such a significant impact to the series that future Pokémon, like Zigzagoon and Badoof, are referred to as the Rattata of their generations. Plus, Rattata evolves into Raticate, and with Raticate's move Hyper Fang, yikes, you could really start doing some damage. Number one, Farfetch. <laughs> I'm just kidding, it's Poliwhirl. It's, it's Poliwhirl. Oh, Poliwhirl. This Pokémon makes the number one underrated spot because, quite honestly, it's difficult to figure out why Poliwhirl isn't way more popular than it is. And I'm talking Pikachu status popular. Its simple, huggable, friendly, derpy design seems like it should have sold billions of plush toys and skyrocketed Poliwhirl into mainstream level fame. For a hot second during Generation 1, it seemed like that might have happened, with Poliwhirl being featured beside Pikachu and Charmander in the Pokémon Center Tokyo logo, as well as showing up front and center on the cover of Time Magazine. The rest of the Pokémon on this list are underrated for reasons that make sense. Muck and Weezing are gross, Hypno is scary, Primeape is too mad, but Poliwhirl? We love you, Poliwhirl. Maybe someday you'll win the hearts of the universe. Maybe someday you'll have a balloon in the Macy's Thanksgiving Day Parade. 
And maybe someday, if we're really, really, really lucky, Farfetch'd will be completely erased from the Pokedex. Thanks for watching, you guys. If you guys like this video, make sure to hit subscribe so you can watch more Pokemon animations every single week. So we have a question for you guys. Which Pokemon is more underrated? Is it Vulpix or is it Umbreon? I feel like both of them are kind of underrated. Let me know, leave a comment, click on one of these boxes to vote. Well, I'll see you next week for more Pokemon animation. Bye!